Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,851. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm in Portland, Oregon, where it is exceptionally hot. We're having a heat wave up here in the Northwest like we have never, ever seen. So we're going to be trying to cool things down a little bit here. But I'm with a very special guest by the name of Chris Bright. Chris, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear? And are you ready to release the clutch? I am ready to go, Mark. All right. We'll have some fun here. Now, before I give you a proper introduction and we dive into this very exciting new business that you've created, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Chris? I once saved Paul Newman's life. What? No (laughs) way. Seriously. Okay. You got to tell the story. Maybe just his ego, but uh, (laughs) as as all car enthusiasts know, Paul was a great car car fan and car team owner. And I I went to an IndyCar race here in Portland and was traipsing around in the pits and he was moving around on his scooter and he was just getting on it and ready to go. And what he didn't realize was his scooter was all wrapped up in... um, in a in some sort of tape oh. or something that would have caused him to crash. Oh, wow. So he starts revving it up, and I jump in front of him and uh, <laughs> tell him to whoa, whoa, whoa. And he thought I was some crazy fan trying I to go, get an autograph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I said, hey, pointed to him and pulled his uh, kind of disentangled him, and he said, hey, thanks, fellas. Uh, and and he was on his way. So maybe not his life, but maybe a bruised ego. Well, imagine if he'd fallen or broken his nose, he would never been the same so you might have saved his career (laughs) but i got to see those uh amazing blue eyes so uh (laughs) you know i was just talking with a guest uh, last week and we were talking about paul newman because he mentioned him and how when he was months away from passing away they put him in a race car i believe it was at daytona and he got to drive his last few laps he had been diagnosed with lung cancer which he passed from and uh he said i just want to drive one more time so after a race they shut down the track and he got to get in his uh race car which i think was a chevrolet of some kind and he ran three laps uh his three last laps so uh yeah wow. Gives me chills. It just gave me chills on this hot day. Yeah, well, good. We need it because, boy, yeah, We uh, for you listeners uh, in the Pacific Northwest here, we usually have pretty moderate temperatures, and we're having three days of record highs. I think uh, you said you're up to about 108, maybe get up to 111, 12 today? We're at 109 right now, oh. and uh, they're, they're calling for a 113. Which oh, my is- gosh. By far an all-time record for Yeah, Portland. here in Gig Harbor, they say 111 today, and that is extremely, I mean, it's like 20 degrees higher than we've <laughs> never seen, I think. So, yeah, we'll try to stay cool, but that's okay, because we're going to do that today. Uh, Chris Bright is the co-founder of, of Collector Part Exchange, the first online marketplace designed exclusively for collector vehicle parts. Chris has worked in high-tech startups for over 25 years. Most recently, he was co-founder of a leading legal software company titled Zap Approved. He was acquired, or that was, he was acquired. You weren't acquired. He was acquired by Vista Equity Partners. Uh, Chris holds a master's degree for international affairs from George Washington University, where he studied, among other things, how to target nuclear weapons. Interesting. Chris's most prized possession as a kid were his Hot Wheels. Funny because I just had two Hot Wheels experts on the show the last few weeks. And he spent his high school and college years roaming the East Coast to see IndyCar, IMSA, and stock car races at tracks including Watkins Glen and Pocono Raceway. We'll be back in just a minute to learn more about this new venture, Collector Part Exchange. But first, a word from our valued sponsor. So give him a listen and we'll be right back. Summer's here, thank goodness, and that means long, hot days. Covercraft's UVS custom sunscreens are quality made and are incredibly fast and easy to use. Your UVS sunscreen is custom tailored for your vehicle, and the accordion design ensures easy storage. Not only do they protect your dash and interior for maximum protection while parking in the sun, sunscreens keep your vehicle's interior significantly cooler. They're durable and dependable for years of use. I have one for all my vehicles and I use them 
every time I park my car when I'm not going to put the cover on. You can choose from a variety of colors, including the original, their Premier Series, and Carhartt designs. Your sunscreen is manufactured with the quality and attention to detail that's been the standard for Covercraft since 1965. And they make really great gifts, too. Get your summer deal today if you use the code yeah 21 Y-E-A-H-21, at Covercraft.com. You'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off compliments of cars, yeah. Simply use the code yeah 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Get your own custom sunscreen today. Last year, I changed my collector car coverage to American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my Orange Crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collections of automobilia and other collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. They insure a lot of items, including automobilia, wine, baseball cards, books, figurines, die-cast models, model trains, glassware, sports memorabilia, toys, and a whole lot more. American Collectors Insurance, they've been protecting us enthusiasts since 1976. They provide you with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a long history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI. Yeah, that's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Rains here at Cars. Yeah, American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. All right, Chris, so we are back. So let's dive a little deeper into the corner. I'd like you to talk more about this new business that you've created, Collector Part Exchange. I love the whole concept. I love the idea because all of us car folks always end up with extra parts. What do you do with them? I know you can go to places like eBay, but it's kind of more general and kind of goofy and become kind of cluttered. I love the niche that you've got here. So Talk to us more about Collector Part Exchange. Where'd the idea come from? Where are you taking it? What are you doing with it? Yeah, well, thanks Thanks again for having me, Mark. You're welcome. I think we as human beings nowadays, whenever you have a curiosity about anything, whether it's something you want to buy or a place you want to go or 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 a piece of information, you go online and you, you, you search around and start with a Google search bar. But finding collector car parts in Google and just online is really tough. <laughs> There's a few pages but, pop up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... You know, whereas cars and uh, especially collector cars sell pretty freely uh, on online with Bring a Trailer and eBay and and even the auction houses now are doing a lot of stuff online. Yeah. The parts world is not that way. It's a little more arcane because uh, mo- most of the folks are gearheads and they've owned a garage and they've accumulated tons of parts and supplies and they just don't have a way to get that online easily. Mm-hmm. So, guilty, guilty as charged, exactly. sir. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, so... I, I was pondering this problem a little bit because it, what what inspired me at first was every year at, in Portland, Oregon, on the rainiest day, weekend of the year, there's a swap meet where 120,000 people show up. And it's like a Super Bowl sized crowd just to walk around in the mud and rain and look at old car parts. Sounds and, like Hershey. Yeah, I actually grew up near Hershey. Uh, <laughs> I worked at Hershey Park when I was a kid. Oh, OK, uh, yeah, you've walked yeah. in some muddy, uh, muddy aisles just like you I know that. Yeah. And um, so, you know, with collector parts, I thought there there has to be some way to make this a little bit better for people because mm-hmm. eBay, as you mentioned, it's like going to the local mall to buy like a really specialized part for something. Yeah, you know, it's like you're yeah. going into this vast nothingness that is a pretty poor experience on every level. And for these parts suppliers, a lot of them are just small businesses, one or two people, family owned. Right. A lot of the owner is a little older, perhaps. And they don't have a good way to make the transition from being a a phone based business to an online business. And that was really the inspiration to begin with. And then as we got into it, we started realizing, gosh, just like you were mentioning, everybody has a bunch of parts in the garage. If you're a car person, Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a theorem that whenever you buy a car, you don't get 
one car, you get 1.1 car. <laughs> there's there's always a box or two of parts in the back, or you start right. buying stuff and swapping them out, and but you never get rid of the old parts. Mm-hmm. And then you maybe your car club has a little swap meet uh, once a year, and you go trade all your parts around and get rid of your junk and discover some treasures that become the junk the next year. And that's just how it goes. So I thought if we could create one place where everybody could go and find the parts they're looking for, the rare, the hard stuff, the the really cool original things, and give everybody a chance to find what they're looking for to make the cars the best that they can be. And for all of us to be able to clean out our closets and put these parts back in circulation instead of at some point in time getting to a point where they end up just getting junked or something. And right. even more so, I, I really want to serve the, the part suppliers because I feel like these are businesses that if they don't find a path to get online, which is where everything is moving, they're going to have trouble surviving and it'll in, end up potentially end up consolidating into a bunch of kind of a few super, you know, stores. Yeah. And, and and I'd rather see it be a really rich uh, environment where uh, there's lots of suppliers who have lots of connections to different sources of parts and, and it makes it more equitable, fun and, and trustworthy, I hope. I think it's great. I was thinking about you this weekend, Chris. I went with a friend over to an area near here to look at a 1960 Porsche 356 a guy had for sale. His father had passed away and he was selling his father's cars and a few other things. And of course, we jumped over there to look at this little Porsche. He had a beautiful Audi TT RS in his garage Mm. too. And and I'm in this garage and there's all these parts, there's, you know, original steering wheel from the car because the car had been restored. And, and I, the poor guy, he was an older gentleman. His, fa- his father was 95 when he passed away. And, and he said, what would you advise me to do with all this stuff? I, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what to do with it. He wasn't a car guy and he didn't know what to do. And I'm looking at this valuable stuff. And I, I said, well, I just coincidentally, I'm about to do a podcast with a guy named Chris, Collector Part Exchange. I think you should go online. So I showed him the, the website and said, here's the website and so forth. And he went, oh, OK, this is pretty cool. This OK, because I was thinking eBay, but he goes, eBay so overwhelming. I don't even know where to put it in mm-hmm. eBay and so forth. So this is a very nice niche. Now, you're a bit of a car guy, and it turns out there's a, a fun coincidence here for you, listener. Uh, Chris happens to live in the same building with Keith Martin, who, of course, I did the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast with last year. Keith's been a guest on the show, been a subscriber to his publication for ever, uh, I think, since it began. But you're also a bit of an alpha guy, right? Y- you betcha. Yeah. Where, tell, tell us where that came from. Yeah. Well, uh- you know, I've always had kind of a little penchant for the the unusual and oddball. And um, <laughs> I was over in Italy. I, I love Italy. I'm a tallophile. I love Italian cars. And I was over in Italy and I saw a little GTV once and I was mm. like, oh, wow, that, that stirred something. So when I had a chance, I started researching them and I said, oh, those aren't actually that that expensive. Mm-hmm. And I bought one uh, back in 2007. That was my first Alpha. And I ne- I've never looked back. I unfortunately had to sell that one when I was starting my last business because uh, I needed some capital. But now my daily driver is a 1974 Julia Super. It's a it's the most adorable four door. It gets so many compliments. I've, I've had cool cars in my life, but this one by far gets the most compliments and beeps and waves when I'm out. And out. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody loves an alpha and they're just beautiful little cars. And as everyone who knows Sports Car Market Magazine and Keith, you know, he's the alpha fiesta man as well. So uh, they're just spectacular. In fact, one of my, I have a couple of them. My favorite sweatshirts have a beautiful alpha Romeo script on them and I'm wearing them all the time when it's chilly. Not today, but when it's chilly <laughs> for sure. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about driving inspirations here, Chris, because you're an entrepreneur. You've started businesses, sold businesses. Who or what was a key mentor or driver for you to be an entrepreneur, start businesses, take these risks, not drive the conventional drive, if you will? Of course, you're you're driving the unconventional car, the Alpha. Who's been the most influential person in your life? Yeah, well, I think I've been really lucky to make great connections in my life and and have people that really have boosted you along. I think when you look back on your life's journey, you you, you look at folks. But I'd say the, the one person that stands out was the co-founder of my last company. And it's pronounced Zapproved, Mark. Zapproved. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Oh, no problem. And uh, her name is Monica Enan, and she's the CEO, and she's still there. We're we're great friends. We were just out wine tasting uh, a couple weeks ago. Nice. And when you start a business with someone, and we started our business in 2008, and got it going tough time uh, to start a business yeah, we launched our product uh, three weeks before lehman brothers collapsed oh and, man and i'd also like to say me and my business partner aaron uh started uh collector part exchange we got started at the beginning of march last year so hey everybody <laughs> if you're here with chris Bray to start a new business yeah. it's time to become a prepper because t- yeah time to get into your basement because all hell is coming yeah so wow but um i i've got impeccable timing but uh, honestly tough times you can adapt and it and it really teaches you really good lessons and habits so yeah. Uh, what I, Monica was so wonderful as a partner and we were very complimentary to each other. So, and I think just like any, any sort of relationship, personal or business or whatever, having someone who isn't like you is really smart. Yeah. Where, where you get the best lessons and, and learn the most about yourself and, and ways to, to be better. So, uh, she was just so driven, detail oriented and just was a great leader and, and taught me how to, to, to manage and, and lead, lead teams. And nice again, to have, to have somebody like that, to start a business, uh, I don't know, that's to be a business partner in the way that we were business partners during those times. And, we went through, I was there for almost 13 years before I stepped away, and uh, we we had a couple of exits during that time, positive, and, and really built something wonderful, and that's a real strong going concern. Well, it's awesome. It's great, which is a great segue to my next question, and that is if you were to advise people to be entrepreneurial, leap out there, take a chance, start a business, what are a couple words of wisdom you might offer them? Yeah, well... You know, I, I think people have misperceptions about entrepreneurship and startups in general, and they, they kind of come up with an idea and they think that's what it takes. And uh, that is the bear. That is <laughs> that's the easy part. <laughs> yeah, that, honestly, it is the easy part. I could come up with 30 ideas right now and probably could, you know, they'd be good businesses. And I, I'm not saying that I'm particularly creative. I just think the idea is the easy part. It's just learning the discipline and the, the complexity of execution. And, you know, we're just getting this business started. It's having been through it, I know this isn't going to be a rocket ship. Everybody looks at like bring a trailer. Randy's probably the greatest, uh, you know, entrepreneur in the collector car space that people have seen in, in recent times. And, you know, that was no overnight success. He was, no, no, no. It took many, a, many, many, yeah. many years. Yeah. And it just, takes so much longer and it's so much harder than you think it's going to be, but it's totally worth it. Yeah. it. You have to be prepared. I always say you have to have a long runway. That means financially, you know, you have to be prepared to not probably have a paycheck for a while or uh, really what you did, surround yourself with the best people that you can. In the case of Randy with Bring a Trailer, uh, he actually gave me a scoop. The day I had him as a guest on my show, which was a very early guest, I think he was in the 300s, your number 1851. Yes. He actually gave me a scoop. He said, you know, we're about to launch these uh, auctions we've never mm-hmm. done before. Because if for those guys that remember him, he was basically just posting cars that were for sale. And that's, of course, what uh, took off. But that wasn't easy. And, uh, you know, he sold his business now and good for him. And there you go. Well, and, and, and honestly, for Collector Part Exchange, he was a big inspiration, nice. Uh, nice. you know, and bring a trailer. Because I, I think what, what they've done and what we're trying to mimic is building something that's of value and specifically for the car community. I mean, there were auction sites just in the way that uh, you could buy cars on eBay. Uh, you could, you've could you been able to do that for years. Yeah, and my, last, my last collector car, I still have it. That's where it came from. Yeah. And, you know, Randy had the vision to do something that because this is a very nuanced world. You can't just go in and for in in my world, like go and buy a collector part and just click the button and go and, you know, one click buy because there's so much nuance. It, it was that model in the first half of the run, year or the <laughs> second. Right. 
you know, they, they, they changed, they changed something about the distributor or what have you, you know, there's so much nuance and knowledge that has to be wrapped around that, that part that we try and create with collector part exchange, a way to have that open conversations between both parties. And, you know, just in the way that uh, bring a trailer allows you to comment and kind of have that, it, that exchange of communication. It's absolutely important and critical for all of this to work. So we just are trying to create a very positive, trustworthy place where you enjoy being. And and, and uh, Rand, Randy was definitely the pioneer on that. Yeah, definitely. Done it. You did a great job. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I want to talk about a big challenge that you face. And this could be in a previous business or in the business you're doing now. But keep your seatbelts on and we'll be right back. What began as a charitable car show has grown into the world's greatest collector car auctions, raising over $133 million for charitable organizations to date. For nearly 50 years, automotive enthusiasts from all over the world have enjoyed the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auctions, and I'm a huge fan. Regarded as the barometer of the collector car industry, their auctions are world-class lifestyle events, where thousands of the world's most sought-after unique and valuable automobiles cross the block in front of a global audience, in person, on TV, or streamed online. Barrett-Jackson produces the world's greatest collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, and new for 2021, Houston, Texas. The excitement of Barrett-Jackson auctions is contagious, and a unique experience is not to be missed. And be sure to visit BarrettJackson.com today. Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions. How did you discover your path to a fulfilling life? Too many young people flounder in finding an education and a career that fits. But for those who have a passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and who love working with their hands, problem solving, and fixing things, a career as a professional auto technician is incredibly rewarding. Cars yeah is pleased to team up with TechForce Foundation, our charity of choice, in bringing scholarships, technical education, and hands-on experience to young people so they can discover a possible future. Join me and lend your support by visiting techforce.org today. All right, Chris, so we're back. So let's talk about a big obstacle, big challenge, or even a big failure you face somehow along the way. This could be business, personal, it doesn't matter. More important is the story and then what it taught you so you could move forward in a positive way. So take us on a bit of a journey, would you? Yeah, well, I unfortunately, I already kind of mentioned it, which was the the challenge of starting a business in the, in the face of the great <laughs> 2008 because right, right. Uh, you know to, to to have a plan for a business and just kick it off literally at the practically the same moment that this is happening uh, is a real real kick in the teeth but no kidding uh, if you're resilient and creative and problem solving then you adapt so with Zapprove, the original product was just this idea of helping people make decisions online like in a corporate setting mm-hmm. and Right after we launched, somebody came to us and said, hey, you know, there's this need uh, in the legal world for uh, people to track communications just like this. So if you kind of twisted it a little, it would be perfectly suited. And that's exactly what we did. And uh, that became the basis of our product, which then became the best uh, category leader in the in the uh, legal software worlds, awesome. and uh, we we were able to sell it to Vista Partners, and it, and I think you know again it just taught us to be lean and mean and to really focus on what is most important. Like when you're starting a business, you know you've got to conserve cash and you've got to problem solve every single day. And I think people get caught up in the airs of being an entrepreneur or a startup and think about kombucha and. <laughs> and uh beer and foosball and it's like you don't need any of those things to start a business you know you you hit the nail on the head in in many many ways you remember 
even earlier back in the 90s during the tech bubble burst. And we had people working for us in the company I was running and they left to go to these new startups. And, oh, well, they've got, I, I, I forget, you know how many times right. I heard it? We got foosball. You yeah. know? I'm like, yeah. foosball? <laughs> but you're, is that what you're doing now? Well, no, but they have foosball and they have this and that and the other thing. And you know, within six, eight, 10 months, they were knocking on our door saying, well, that company's not around anymore. But but you, you, the other thing, the value bomb you dropped here that I heard is, it's this way in EBIS. You've got to really think about your cash flow. You've got to really conserve. You've got to be careful. And if you're raising money, you are uh, got to be careful with that money you're raising because you that's being entrusted to you. And this whole myth of you, these guys are just out blowing cash and buying cars and planes. Those are the guys that end up in court. Yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. It's like spend it like it's your own. And uh, there was somebody that uh, we had working with us, and this quote always sticks with me. He says, "You know what's fun? Winning." Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it takes a lot, lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of dis- discipline, a lot of uh, hard hard work, and and the other thing you mentioned with Monica, surrounding yourself with really great people. That's the other key to success I've heard over and over here at Cars. Yeah. What about a bucket list item for you looking ahead? Now, having just launched this business, if you went ahead, let's just not go too far out, but let's say three years out, where do you see this business being? What What's your vision for this? Yeah, well, you know, I I hope that it becomes the hub for people who restare, restore, repair cars and maintain cars, these collector cars, because we all love these cars because they're a legacy to from to us and we're we're stewards to keep these vehicles on the road because they're there's not going to be any more made right so so we have to keep them going and keep this hobby alive no matter what happens I don't care if we get autonomous cars these these cars have emotion and cultural import in engineering ingenuity and they are genuinely important historic artifacts right. and you know, I want Collector Part Exchange to be the place where everybody goes when they need something for their vehicle that they can go find it and get it from somebody who either is in their their own world or across the world. Because I think, you know, we it's easy for us to forget here in the U.S. that uh, there's people all over this world and, and car collectors come in any, any many uh Shapes, shapes and sizes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So it's like, hey, if you're in the AG, JDM world, you might be able to source parts from people in Japan. Or we had a guy who was down in um, South Africa who reached out to us. We have a feature on Collector Part Exchange called Part Ping, where you can nice. find a, we'll go and help you find a part. If you don't see it on our site, you just tell us what you're after. And we reach out to our network and we'll, we'll see if we can help you find it. Cool. Not everything is you know, on the menu, if you will, because just because everybody who sells parts, they hit probably only 10 or 20% of their inventory is even online. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's out in the back in parted out. On cars. a shelf. Yeah. Right. So he needed a brake master cylinder for a right hand drive, uh, Alfa Romeo from the sixties. <laughs> Uh, they, they he couldn't find one in South Africa, so he reached out to to us, and within 24 hours, I had four different wow. uh, options for him Incredible. from the UK and the US, and even somebody who could rebuild the one that he had. So, you know, it, like that's just one story, but that's the type of help that we can offer. And I think also one of the things that makes us different is we don't just sell parts. Like there's used parts, there's new parts, there's remanufactured parts. There's some people who are doing 3D printed parts, but even more so, there's people who do services like rebuilds or um, different things that are sold side by side. And you might not even know that they're available or how to find them. And those folks can list their services. And uh, that might be a better way to go because you can you might be able to upcycle something that's already on your car and not replace it with something new. Very cool. So here's your new mantra. We help you find the tack needle in the haystack. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark. Mark yeah. Green. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I'll expect a commission every time that you. I, I give yeah. me a royalty. Okay. On there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> then I can buy some more parts. Exactly. Well, you know what I heard there too in your talk was uh, what came to mind is the uh, the song from the TV show Cheers, a place to go where everybody knows your name, creating a community 
yep. within the car parts world and where people are trusted and you start to have relationships with people and they go, oh yeah, that guy's been there. And you even see that on Bring a Trailer. Uh, right. Same people buying and selling cars many times. You see the same people talking about cars. And, uh, you know, Keith and I talked about it on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast where you'll learn things reading those threads about cars that you never know. I didn't realize that the tack needle, to mention that again, was that color on that year only. Wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. So yeah, you're creating a wonderful, wonderful thing there. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Being an alpha guy, I'm guessing it might be an alpha, but maybe not. But what was that really special vehicle in your past? And maybe share a memory you have about that ride. Sure, sure. Well, I'd, I hate to disappoint you, but it's not an alpha. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm not disappointed. So I didn't grow up in a gearhead family, but I always, I've been into cars since birth, it seems like. And, <laughs> and I got really excited in the eighties is when I really started getting like road and track magazine. And I was just enthralled by every cover was like these exotic cars and, and all of that. So I got definitely pulled in that direction versus like muscle and things like that. So when I, in the mid nineties, when my career finally got really going and I was making some good money, uh, I was looking to buy a new car. I wasn't making great money. And I decided, well, why get a new car when I could maybe look for something different? And I landed on a Porsche 928. Ooh, okay. And, something that uh, Keith is driving right now. <laughs> exactly. I, In fact, I drove his up from uh, California, and it was oh, okay. uh, a blast from the past. Yeah, um, yeah. Those are awesome cars. Uh, and. I, I still think they're deeply un, unappreciated. Well, but, they've uh, always uh, been misunderstood, I think. Yeah. And I misunderstood them when they came out because I'm a Porsche guy, true and true. Yeah. And I went, what are they doing? No engine in the back, water cooled, v like what? And then it yeah. looked like an egg. I'm like, what? Yeah. what are they up to? Yeah. And, you know, so I, I bought this car and it just... It was a great car. I drove it as a daily driver for wow, uh, good for you 12, for fifteen years. No and, way, fifteen years! And, wow. Yeah, I put one hundred and seventy thousand miles on it, and at the end of that, I went back with my mechanic, and we added. Who <laughs> is now I, wealthy? <laughs> I, well, I always well, I added up all of the bills, and we based on the number of miles that I put on that car and the maintenance costs, it was less than a Honda Civic. Well, if I bought you know, a new Honda Civic in the same year. I was poking fun at you there, but I'm still shocked because one of the things that we've always heard about those, and even when they came out, was the very high cost of repairs and how persnickety they were and blah, blah, blah. But you got a good one. Well, it, I did. And the other thing is using a car like that on a daily basis actually wards off a lot of the demons yes, because yes. you're just constantly putting it through heat cycles and keeping it bedded in mm -hmm. and – you know, it, uh, and that's the way it is with my, uh, Julia. I drive it every time I drive. I don't drive as much anymore because of the pandemic and I work out of my home. But, uh, the, the reality is I drive that car a lot and it gives me very, very little trouble because, Hey, if something, if something was going to break, it was, it's already been broken. I would guess. And, uh, you know, keep don't, never defer maintenance on these cars. That's, that's the other. Lesson. Well, you hit the nail on the head and I hear this all the time. And especially in the collector car world, and we've all done this. If we've bought a really nice low mileage collector car, as soon as you get it, you end up spending five, six, eight, ten more time. Just, just follow Keith Martin's blog. Right. You'll see right. he's the king of that. Hey, cars that sit are they may be pretty, but if you want to drive them, they're going to be a problem. And cars don't like to sit, especially old cars don't like to sit. And so the, I think you're right. You, you know, drive them, go out there and use yeah. them. That's what they're for. And uh, it's more fun anyway. So the fact that you drove a 928 for 15 years as a daily driver, my hat's off to you, my friend. Thanks. Thank that, you. That is very cool. I'm going to crawl into your head here. Uh -oh. And ask you a question. No it's one's scary. no one. That's OK. I, I've been there many times. 18, you have your N90 mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I've been there 1851 times. So don't worry. I, I can handle it. If you were a car, you were manifest as a vehicle. What would you be and why? There's so many scary places. This <laughs> You know, I, I think I already mentioned I, I'm an Italophile and oh, mm -hmm. the if I were a car, 
and this is more aspirational, but I would be a Lamborghini Miura. I, yeah. I went to a car, like when I was a kid, I grew up in, uh, as I said, central Pennsylvania, and this was not car central. Uh, so a car show came through and there was going to be a Lamborghini Countach there. So I went to see this Lamborghini Countach and I was like, wow, that is so cool. But right next to it was a Miura and I'd never heard or seen one before. And it knocked my socks off. Um, so I just think it's one of the most innovative, beautiful, expressive cars on the road and powerful. And and I'll even make it more specific. I want to be the Lamborghini Miura that was in the opening scene of the Italian job. The original. The Italian orange job. the orange one, I think it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just cruising up some alpine road, just ripping through corners and just yeah. like that's perfection. Like being on a Alpine road in a car like that is, I think, about the best life could be, Ex- except for the mob hit at the end where. Yeah, that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, yeah, where they crash it into a bulldozer. Yeah, Spoiler. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. You know, it's a beautiful vehicle, uh, very innovative at the time. You think about, uh, you you would have loved to have seen and listened to Enzo Ferrari the first time he saw one and went, uh oh, <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> this is- I'm sure he poo pooed it, but man. Uh, well, you know, the first Lamborghinis that came out, those three hundreds and so they weren't very pretty cars i don't think and uh and then they came out with the countach the mura and it was like okay now they're getting on stride and then they went through that kind of weird period of tacking on stuff but um i love those cars i got to drive one that was a, a bright green color uh, mm-hmm. with the, yeah it was just gorgeous and uh, having that engine right over your shoulder a lot like driving the uh, first gen four gts right uh, you know uh, only more raw so yeah, yeah i like it beautiful beautiful cars now i always ask guests about what they like to do to give back to others, because I've learned after talking to so many people that that's an important aspect of life. One thing I know you do, because uh-huh. I, I follow him online, is you go upstairs, the building you're in, and you teach Keith's son, Bradley, how to cook. You've been giving him cooking yeah. lessons. He's a young teenager. And boy, if that's a skill that so many young teenagers probably don't get, what started that? Well, uh, he... He's has a curiosity for cooking and and I enjoy cooking a lot. So it, during the pandemic, uh, it, you know, Keith and I are, are friends. And when he moved into my building, you know, we were acquainted, we'd say hi, but we didn't really hang out together. But when the pandemic happened, I, I said, hey, I'm going to be we're going to be pandemic pals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're going to stay in each other's bubble so that, you know, I can assist you and and we can we can kind of like hang out together. So. Uh, we did that, and we we we've had dinner probably every single week since the pandemic started, at least once a week, oh, and nice, nice. so many more things. And a lot of that, uh, our dinners were organized around uh, having uh, Bradley cook. So cool. uh, taught him how to make pizza, and we made handmade pastas, yeah, and yeah. all sorts of uh, different different types of. Uh, things that he whatever he was interested in if he came down and said he wanted to make something i'd we'd we'd make it uh you know let's be fearless i think too many people fuss around cooking and try and you know uh get into it so i've been doing it enough years where it's like just kind of start having fun with it and don't make it too too much of a, a thing so and he was a great student. He was super curious and and really did a good job. Well, you're a great inspiration and, and others out there that have that opportunity, you know, reach out and, and, and do some of that with a kid. And, and even though I've talked about it before, take a kid on a ride to a car show, uh, mm-hmm. take a kid to a car show where maybe his parents aren't into cars, but offer to do that. But I think it's great you're up there teaching him how to cook. I enjoyed watching those uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, those videos so forth. Really yeah. nice of you. Is there a book that you've read you'd like to share with our listeners that you found real valuable? Gosh, yeah. Well, so so many. I'm, I I have to say, I've really tried to get back into reading. There was a while where my life just felt too busy, and I wasn't yeah. able to concentrate. And I realized how much how important reading is to me. You know, it's like it's so easy to sit and binge a Netflix show, but that's reading is like a meditation where your 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 imagination is fired, and it requires you to concentrate and be quiet for a while. So I've really tried to like get back into that habit and. There's a book that I read recently, and it's car related, so I think it's uh, really good for this audience too. But you've probably talked to the author. I, it is a book by Neil Bascom called Faster. Yes, uh, yeah. Which is, I thought that was a tremendous book, and and it's 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 a good book in that 
you learn a lot about cars, but I'm really fascinated with pre-war Grand Prix cars in particular, and I'll get back to that in a second. But, um, you know, this is really a history book. It's about how Grand Prix racing collided with world events around World War II and seeing how the the drivers and the race teams between the Germans and the non-Germans, you know, how that uh, affected everybody within that um, that that world. Um, yes. For better or worse so i thought that was just a, a great book and you know i'm i'm a huge tazio nuvolari fan i yes. have my little turtle that i got at his museum <laughs> in mantua and uh yeah in that whole era I, i'm fascinated by uh the great designer vittorio yano and in fact when i'm uh, one day, uh, I hope I've already started researching it. One day, I hope to write an English language biography of Yano because I think he oh. people do not understand what an amazing genius he was for in the car world. Um, and and I have to say, I uh, switching topics. I, I've got one. I also during the pandemic, I picked up Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I, by by Persig, right? Yep, yep, Robert Persig. You know, it's a, it's a profound book on a lot of different levels, but I, you know, and I, as a car person or a mechanical person, you really appreciate element, those elements of it, but it's a book about mental health. It's a book about a father and a son yeah. and, and a book about motorcycles and, and so much more. So I, I just found that to be a really, it's a book that you have to invest yourself to get into, but uh, I took a lot away from it. So if, if, if you read it a long time ago, it's probably worth picking up again. Or if you haven't read it before, check it out. Absolutely. You know, uh, Neil Boscom, who was a guest 1493 back in uh, February of 2020, uh, right before all hell broke loose here uh, in the world, um, he was referred to me by another past guest here, Gar Stein, who wrote The Art of Racing in the Rain. And he said, you know, you got to talk to Neil. He's coming out with his book. And uh, it was it's an awesome book. And I love the the history and what you learn there. But it's it's really, really cool. And the other book, The Zen and Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, my son gave me that book. And it was not, I, I started reading it and I got through the first chapter and I went, what, what's going on here? It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And I had to go back and start over and slow down uh, because, yeah, very mental. For yeah. Sure. I, it's it's a dense book and it took a long time to get through and it was exhausting at times. But yes. it's things that you know, just like most things that if you if you really go into it with the right mind and and put the energy into it, you'll it'll pay out. Yeah, my son Blake, I kept saying, stick with the dad, stick with the dad, because uh, he's just a voracious reader and way more than I am. And uh, I'm glad I did. And it's one of those books that's been recommended many times here. And you you regular listeners know this, but any new listeners, keep in mind, there's a great place on the Cars Yeah website called Guest Recommended Books under the Resources tab. I've got almost 2,000 books listed there for you by, from all my inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and I made it really easy for you to buy them with a quick click to buy. We'll be back in a moment. One more quick stop with a sponsor here we come back we're going to go on the ultimate drive with chris bright so sit tight we'll be right back i've discovered linkage it's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market driving restoring collecting and discovering your passion for motor vehicles linkage is about experiences opinions and values linkage is an actual informed reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe, and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Did you know that CARS YEAH is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. And CARS YEAH is the only five day a week automotive focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth 
Plus, your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique and very personal way? Well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyeah.com or through the website at carsyeah.com today to learn more. All right, Chris, we're going to go on the ultimate drive. That means you get to pick the vehicle. You get to pick who you're with, where you're going, what you're doing. So what does the ultimate drive look like for you? Yeah, it, it, I, I probably have a little bit different take on this because so many, so, so many guests, you know, and rightfully so. It's like a car that they love with a person that they love. I'm not doing that. <laughs> You're not going to do that. You're going to break something here, well, I think. You, you said a magic wand, right? I do, yeah. Magic scepter, I like to say. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm fascinated with like old sports cars and old drivers and things like that. And, okay. and if I had a magic wand, this would be what I would ask for, which is to go back to Brescia in 1953 at the Mil Emilia. And I would get to be the passenger in... Juan Manuel Fangio's Alfa Romeo 6C3000. To be able to sit next to, I think, the greatest driver of all time and uh, to to be able to witness firsthand what he, to see him in action uh, and on those roads and in that particular event and an event that I'm just completely transfixed by. It was It was insane and dangerous, but it was everything romantic about yeah. uh, what car racing was. And and I look at the drivers of that era, and while the U.S. was involved in the Cold War and had astronauts, the drivers of the 50s uh, in the Mila Milia were the, were the astronauts of Europe. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, cool. they were just brave, and they, they pushed innovation. And Fangio was, unlike any of them, having been much older than all of them, and... You know, to be able to survive in that era with barely even having any serious accidents in his entire career just showed how much farther ahead he was. And and if I were to go back and recommend one more book, I would say uh, one of my favorite car books of all time is Fangio's autobiography, mm. um, where he talks about his racing career. And, you know, it, he was such a mechanical person. He was doing a race back in the pre-war in South America where you drove, it was essentially like Perry to car, but for uh, South America. And in the middle of the race, he, he blew a ride through his, through the block and he takes the car over. Now that's like a life in it. That's a car ending event, right? Oh, sure. Not, yeah. You. you ventilate the engine, you're done. Yeah. In the middle of the race, he finds a, you know, and this is a multi-day race. He finds a, a mechanic, he finds a welder, he welds up the block gets the car running again with the same parts <laughs> and finishes the race and wins it. I mean, incredible. Yeah. Unbelievable. So yeah. he's a, he's a big personal hero of mine and he was always, he was so skilled, but he was always humble and appreciative of the fans and just a, a real generous person. So uh, a real hero of mine. Very, very early, uh, many years ago, he was the featured guy at the Monterey historic races. And I got to go up and shake his hand and get a signed autograph of the poster that year, which had him on it. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty darn cool legacy, iconic person for sure. Well, you've taken us on a very nice ride today, my friend. Before I let you go, could you share a success quote, a mantra, maybe some words of wisdom? Yeah, well, there's a saying that I live by, and it's it's kind of a, a cheeky one, as they say, but I really do think about it a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's it's called Murphy's Paradox. It's the same Murphy, same Murphy as Murphy's Law. And yeah. Murphy's Paradox says... Doing it the hard way is always easier. <laughs> and to me, you know, whenever you have that temptation for a shortcut or you think you're going to cut the line or get ahead because uh, you're going to be clever, it's more important to do the work. Yes. Uh, you know, you have to do the work. Everybody wants an advantage. Everybody wants to get ahead. And you know what? There is only one way through, and it's by doing the work. And and that's what that saying says to me. You just have to hunker down, pay your dues, learn, gain the knowledge that you need to gain, gain the skills you need to gain, and then you'll be successful. Yep. Doing it the hard way is always easier. I love it. Awesome. How can people learn more about Collector Part Exchange? 
Yeah, well, you will be able to find us quite easily online at uh, collectorpartexchange.com. And yeah, check us out. Uh, we'd love it. We're just getting started. So we're, we're getting people signed up on store. So if you've got stuff to sell, go ahead and put it for sale. Uh, it costs nothing to list items. There's only a 5% commission uh, when something sells. So you cool. can go ahead and load up and do it right from your mobile phone. Or if you have something that you're looking for, Go ahead and give it a shot and check it out. You'll you'll find all sorts of different folks uh, all over the world who are selling. We've got people in the U.S. Uh, and over in Europe, uh, U.K., Switzerland, Italy, uh, different places over there. So, yeah, uh, it's got a lot to offer, but it's still early days. So, you know, come be part of it. And hopefully together we can build something that keeps this hobby going. Absolutely. I encourage you listeners, check it out. Uh Pour yourself a tall drink because you're going to be there a while. Uh, there's a lot to see, a lot to do. Collectorpartexchange.com. It's very, very cool. Uh, new place to hang out, get parts, buy parts, share parts, share information, become a part of the family. And I want to do a shout out to my friend Cindy Meidel. She's from Car PR. She's the one that introduced me to Chris, although I'd known of him from the uh, cooking post with Bradley and Keith. Uh, <laughs> but it's really nice to connect with you today. By the way, Cindy, uh, she brought me... Cars, you have very first guest, Rick Cole from Rick Cole's Auction, the first guy to do auctions during Car Week way back when. Thank you, Cindy, my friend. That was very, very kind of you. She got me going when I was trying to come up with a crazy idea of being a, a podcaster. Chris, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for sharing your experiences and this new business with us today, Collector Part Exchange. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. It was a real honor being a guest on Cars. Yeah, I've been a, a, a listener for many years. So uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you having me. The honor was all mine. This was great fun. Collector Part Exchange, check it out tonight. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!